This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 382. Katniss shows us that sometimes sacrifice is necessary. Part two, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Hey, welcome to day two of 2018 and a Tuesday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of five podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself, except on Fridays. That's where I usually answer your questions. And if you want your question answered by me on this show, come by oldpodcast.com and submit your audio. Or you can call in your question by dialing 61 I love OHD. And as a bonus, that enters you into small special raffles to win books from us. So for those of you that were listening yesterday, when Steve mentioned going to bed early so that you can catch that morning workout, that was totally me. For example, New Year's Eve was a huge struggle for me. I'm used to going to bed by like nine o'clock, meaning I'm in bed trying to fall asleep by 9 p.m. Trying to stay up to watch the ball drop with my family and friends on New Year's Eve was a challenge. And I just kept thinking about how this is so sabotaging my workout tomorrow. So yesterday I did get in a quick workout. It wasn't as intense as I had wanted it to be, but that's okay. I still squeezed it in. Now, speaking of yesterday's show, today is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That's episode 381. But if you're all caught up, let's jump right in, hear part two, and continue optimizing your life. Katniss shows us that sometimes sacrifice is necessary. Part two by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Two, unhealthy creature comforts. We all have things we love that don't necessarily add to our development. For me, that's video games, not all of which are healthy. They shaped my childhood, inspired my book, Level Up Your Life, and I still play them occasionally. Because I know I have an addictive personality, I have to prioritize things. Fitness or personal development or playing music over gaming. Maybe your comfort isn't video games or Netflix. Maybe it's something like spending money on unimportant stuff, like more shoes, more clothes, a nicer car, or a bigger house, instead of spending it on things that bring you lasting happiness. Are you willing to give up some comforts in exchange for what you really want? I'm not telling you to forever abandon all things you love and that bring you small amounts of joy. Instead, I'm asking you to dig deep and really look at how you're spending your time and money and decide what's really important to you. Is that something you need? or a comfort that's holding you back? Can you sacrifice it temporarily to get yourself in a better place? Three, unhealthy lifestyle choices. My friend Adam often jokes with me, I really hope all this fitness stuff is worth it for you. You know how good pizza and ice cream is, right? It can be hard to sacrifice certain aspects of an unhealthy lifestyle to become the best version of yourself, especially if you have certain personality traits. If you're overweight and unhappy and interested in living a better life, you might need to make more sacrifices when it comes to the comfort foods that provide you with temporary happiness. When people tell me, I could never give up pizza, bread, beer, pasta, candy, whatever, or, but I don't wanna make that change. I say, great, it's what you're doing currently working. Are you healthy and happy with how you look? Keep doing it. If not, then maybe you could try making a sacrifice or two until you're better emotionally equipped to have those things in your diet. Don't sacrifice what you really want long-term for what you want right now. Be better than that part of your brain that we call the lizard brain that says, gimme, 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 now, now, now. Four, your comfy hobbit hole. Sometimes being the happiest and most fulfilled version of yourself can only come when you are spending your day on a job that is challenging and aligned with your skills and ideally your interests. It might mean you have less money in the bank. It might mean certain luxuries are no longer possible. I had to quit great jobs twice in order to get started on my hero's journey and create nerd fitness. Both decisions required me to downsize my lifestyle and drastically cut my expenses. Your journey might require a big sacrifice. Hopefully the job you have allows you to be who you are and gives you enough free time to do the things you wanna do. Indiana Jones can be both an adventurer and an archeology span professor. And plenty of members of the Rebellion work regular jobs they love and live out their free time as superheroes. However, there are definitely instances in which sacrificing a crappy job or a pivoting to a different career path is the right choice. As the saying goes, it's better to be on the bottom of the ladder you want to climb 
than at the top of the one you don't. If you are a level 30 ranger, but you know in your heart you are an assassin, it's better to be at the beginning of the path, but on the right path. Your future level 50 self thanks you. The rebellion needs you. Years ago, I had an idea to start my own website about helping nerds get fit. However, because I was spending so much time at my day job, playing video games on weeknights, partying on weekends, and traveling for a long-distance relationship, I never had time to make it happen, nor was I in particularly great shape. It wasn't until I started making sacrifices and volunteered my current self to save my future self. I sacrificed my video game time until nerd fitness became self-sufficient. I sacrificed my amazing job to try and turn nerd fitness into a business. I sacrificed a good but unhealthy long-distance relationship to learn to stand on my own two feet. I sacrificed unhealthy comfort food and too many nights out at bars to improve my health and fitness. Just as Katniss's sacrifices inspired a movement and Harry's sacrifices saved the wizarding world, your sacrifices can create amazing, permanent changes in your life and the lives of those around you too. You never know unless you try. Some success stories. Anthony sacrificed more time gaming to go for 30-minute walks and then went on to lose 200 pounds, change jobs, moved, and started dating. Ryan sacrificed potato chips and junk food to fix his relationship with food and lost over 100 pounds. Josh and Leah first sacrificed soda and ended up losing more than 160 pounds as a couple and becoming an inspiration for their child. One small sacrifice can set you on a new path forever. What's one sacrifice, no matter how small, that you're going to make this week to further your cause? You just listened to part two of the post titled, Katniss Shows Us That Sometimes Sacrifice Is Necessary by Steve Kam of nerdfitness.com. You wanna know a little secret about comfort foods? First, do this with me. Think of those foods that bring you comfort. Do you have some in mind? I bet I can use my psychic abilities and name at least one food you're thinking about right now. I'm gonna try and list some. Let's see if I'm right. Potato chips, french fries, ice cream, candy, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, cake, cookies. Did I list any of yours? Well, here's the thing. Those foods, foods that are high carb, high fat, which is basically what all those foods I mentioned have in common, those we call comfort foods. Why is that? We're learning that when we eat those high-fat, high-carb foods, it releases good-feeling hormones in the brain. No surprise there. So when we consume those foods, they make us feel relaxed, less stressed. They make us feel good. So it's almost like we have learned as human beings to turn to those foods to help us relieve stress. Therefore, we turn to them for comfort. Think about it this way. Whenever you're stressed out, eating a big salad never seems to really work, right? Now, for whatever reason, we are built so that when we consume non-starchy vegetables like lettuce, we don't get that same rush of good-feeling hormones. So what we have to do is train ourselves that when we're eating this nice, big, beautiful bowl of salad, although it doesn't have many carbs in it or high-fat foods, we have to train our brains into thinking, this is doing something good for us. We need to help our brains release those good feeling hormones. We have to tell ourselves this is so good for our bodies right now. Turn those salads and veggie trays into comfort foods. And don't blame yourself too much when you want mac and cheese, potato chips, french fries, soda, candy to make yourself feel better. There is a biological mechanism for that. But knowing that now, if you can stop yourself wait five minutes before reaching for that soda, candy bar, bag of potato chips, whatever, your craving will likely disappear. And you just saved yourself 150 calories. So after five minutes, if you're still hungry, that's okay. Maybe turn to grabbing a piece of fruit, munching on some carrots, or a quarter cup of mixed nuts, something like that. Sometimes that'll satisfy the craving. Or drink some water. That can help too. It may take some time, but as you start steering yourself away from those comfort foods, you'll start to see that you no longer crave them as much. And so it becomes this positive cycle. Again, have patience with yourself. Understand that it will take time, but it does work. Now, once again, before I go, if you want to possibly hear your question being answered right here on the show, plus be in special bonus raffles, come by oldpodcast.com to submit your audio question. 
Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call it in. The number is 61 I love OHD. All right, that's it for today. Thank you, as always, for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber to the show. Have a great rest of your day and second day of the year, and I'll be back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.